Hi, I'm Steve Schwartzberg, and I'm running for Congress in the 5th District as a Bernie Sanders supporter. I've been a lifelong social democrat, and I'm convinced that it's time for both a moral and a political revolution in this country. My training is as a diplomatic historian, Yale PhD 1996, a scholar of the history of American foreign relations who believes that we can draw from our common past to build a shared future. My favorite revolutionary among the founders of our country and the framers of our Constitution is the Pennsylvania lawyer James Wilson. Years before Thomas Jefferson, Wilson had written, Man is by nature equal and free. The American people, according to Wilson, we the American people are sovereigns without subjects. This was and is a succinct way of stating the most basic ideal of the American Revolution. It took the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement to even begin to make that true for African Americans. It took the suffragists and the women's rights movement to even begin to make that true for women. And it took the organization of trade unions and the trade union movement to even begin to help keep that true for working people, to help prevent the power of the state from being used on behalf of corporations to make subjects of workers. In our own day, it will take a moral and political revolution to prevent the 1% from making subjects of the rest of us and destroying the promise of the American Revolution. And it will take repentance on the part of the American people cease attempting to rule over the Indian nations as if they were in any way our subjects or subject to our jurisdiction. I think we have to begin with a vision of what kind of society we want to be. I believe we want to be a social democratic society, just, prosperous, ecologically sound, and self-governed by we the people. We are far from that now. 81% of American households experienced flat or falling incomes during the period from 2005 to 2014. Nearly half the Americans in the country, according to a recent Federal Reserve study couldn't cover an emergency expenditure of $400 because they have so little in savings. 90% of the kids born in 1940 wound up higher in the ranks of the income distribution than their parents. Barely 40% of those born in 1980 have done so. To some extent, this reflects the weakness of the American labor movement, which must be strengthened. But more fundamentally, it represents privileged treatment for the rich in the form of preferential tax cuts, preferential bailouts, and preferential access to credit generally. Privileged treatment that has led to a situation in which the income of the top 1% has gone from 10% of the total of the country in 1980 to 21% of the total of the country in 2015, more than double. This represents a concentration of wealth and power in our economy and our society that is ultimately incompatible with our democracy and that must be changed. Get to work this crowd. So, beyond restoring Eisenhower year at top tax rates, in order to make sure that the wealthy pay their fair share of the nation's taxes. We need to invest massively in our nation's infrastructure and ensuring quality health care for all. Programs of action that will benefit everyone in the country, including the rich, but which will especially benefit the poor, the working class, and the middle class. Now I have to remember what I was going to say. Um, all right. When one draws a blank, one pulls out one's notes. Okay. Good. Ah, uh, yes. You can only say what he's allowed. It is high time for the United States to have a Marshall Plan again, a Marshall Plan for America. We helped rebuild Western Europe after World War II, and we can help rebuild ourselves. Our roads, our bridges, our railways, our water systems, our electrical grid are all in need of massive investment, and the world is in need of our decarbonizing our economy. When A. Philip Randolph first proposed the idea of a freedom budget in the 1960s, the idea of a budget that would seek to make progress towards social justice out of the proceeds of a growing economy and contribute to its further growth in turn, he did so with an eye toward the abolition of poverty in the United States within 10 years for all who were poor, regardless of ethnicity. I believe it is time for a freedom budget for the 21st century. I favor the principle of reparations for those who are descended from American slaves. And in particular, I favor H.R. 40 with its call to begin to investigate the issue. But my emphasis is primarily on support for a freedom budget for the 21st century. The ongoing injustice of racial economic inequality in this society forces us to recognize the tremendous gulf between the relative net worth uh, of white and black households, the median net worth of white and black households, $144,200 versus $11,200 in 2013, a more than tenfold difference. But if we are to persuade the American people to begin to address this, 
We must begin, I believe, by persuading to help everybody in the country through investment in public education, investment in housing, investment in job training that will benefit all who are poor, regardless of their ethnicity. It is time for us to water the tree of economic growth at its roots instead of its top leaves. I began to get active politically, thank you. I began to get active politically in high school with a national organization called the Social Democrats USA, whose national chairman was the great civil rights organizer, Byron Rustin, the principal organizer of the 1963 March on Washington, at which King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. I learned a lot from Byron about the moral authority of nonviolence and about the importance of strategy. Above all, I learned from him that a movement that's fighting for justice fights for all or it's fighting for nobody, not even itself. Because we seek to stand in the center of progress toward democracy, we have what he called a terrifying responsibility to the society as a whole. I thought about a career in politics at the time, but in college I became more interested in academics. And for the past few decades, I've published work on both the good and the harm that America has done in the world in hopes of helping us do better. Perhaps the single greatest contribution that the United States ever made to the cause of democracy and social justice in another country was its support for the Japanese land reform after World War II. Instead of seeking revenge on those who had attacked us, we sought to make allies of the Japanese people as against the militarists who had betrayed them as well as the people of the United States. My article on the subject, The Soft Peace Boys, Pre-Surrender Planning and Japanese Land Reform, is available online for free download. My book on the United States and the struggle for democracy in Latin America during the Truman years is available for purchase from the University Press of Florida or online from Amazon. Most recently, I finished a manuscript on the fight against Cherokee removal in the 1830s, the fight to try to prevent what became the trail of tears and death. We, the American people, are all in this together. As James Wilson wrote of the spirit behind American progress in 1790, all will receive from each, and each will receive from all, mutual support and assistance. Mutually supported and assisted, all may be carried to a degree of perfection hitherto unknown, perhaps hitherto not believed. It is high time to restore the hope-filled moral consensus on which our nation's progress rests, the consensus that was fought for by James Wilson, and Byron Rustin, and Bernie Sanders, and countless others. It is time to transform our politics and our economics in order to take this country back from the 1% and serve the common good. If you support Medicare for all, if you support massive infrastructure and a Marshall, investment, Marshall Plan investment program for the United States, if you support a freedom budget to abolish poverty, if you believe in respecting the national sovereignty of the native peoples, if you want a foreign policy that is concerned with the global common good and that respects the rights and interests of others, then I ask you to please consider supporting my campaign. Thank you.